Magandang gabi po mga kaibigan. Sa ating pong coffee chat section ng uh, Melo Acuna Reports, makakausap natin si Father Emil Arbatin. Siya po ang tagapagsalita ng Cardinal Designate, ang pinakahuling uh, kardinal na nahirang ni Pope Francis, si Archbishop uh, Jose Fuerte at Vincula ng Archdiocese of uh, Capiz. Father, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Magandang gabi and welcome to our coffee chat. Uh, good evening, Melo. Uh, good evening sa lahat na sumasab uh, sumasabay uh, who's following us dito sa coffee chat. Opo. Uh, can you tell us, uh, will you be joining His Eminence sa paglalakbay patungo sa Roma scheduled on November 28 yung consistory? Um, the Cardinal is supposed to leave today for for Rome pero he canceled his trip due to reports na ang daming nagpositive sa na covid no doon sa sa Italy mm -hmm. last week nakatanggap siya ng report na na may mga reports na in just a day meron nag positive sa covid na, na 7,000 cases in just one day. Mm -hmm. Tapos, I just found out also today and na meron nag-positive today and I think yesterday na more or less more than 30,000 sa Italy. Mm -hmm. So, medyo risky actually for the Cardinal Designate to continue with his trip to the Vatican. In fact, kahit yung isa niya rin kasama na doon sa Brunei, nag-cancel na rin ang trip. So, paano po ang magaganap? Sapagkat yung consistory is uh, a must for one to, you know, to get the red hat, so to speak. But what alternatives are there given the conditions brought about by COVID-19? Um, I think there are three options. Uh, number one, the uh, Cardinal Advincola may receive the red hat from the nunciature, from the nuncio. Um, pero I think ngayon ang, ang nuncio natin wala pa rin eh. Hindi pa dumarating. And then, ang second option is he may receive the red hat from a fellow cardinal who's just nearby. So we have here in our country uh, Cardinal Rosales and Cardinal Quevedo. So I do not know kung, kung saan dyan. And then mm -hmm. thirdly, um, since uh, he may also receive the red hat from the head of state, um, since he is al he's also a diplomat already, being a cardinal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the head of state. And uh, as head of state, we can refer to His Excellency President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, right? Yes, uh, from President Duterte. I see. But the red hat will come from Rome. Um, yes, yes, that's right. Ah, okay. So, ano po ang uh, nakikita ninyong pinaka-possible na mangyari given the situation today? Which of the three scenarios would be uh, most applicable? Okay. Now, knowing the Cardinal, knowing Cardinal Advincula, he is... Um, kung saan yung pinakasimple at saka yung hindi siya medyo nakakasagabal sa ibang tao and which is most convenient for everybody, most definitely he will choose that path. Mm, okay. Describe to us the new cardinal. I've been covering the CBCP plenary conferences pero bihirang-bihirang magsalita ang kanyang kabunian. Although nandun siya sa uh, Office on Women, is, ang Executive Secretary eh, si Mrs. Uh -oh. Penny Tatad, give us an eye view of the new Cardinal. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we notice, I, I'd like to borrow a term from a fellow priest here who wrote an article about the Cardinal. There seems to be a lacuna of information, media information, uh, information coming from the media about mm -hmm. the Cardinal. Parang, parang out of nowhere, 
uh, parang lumabas na yung pangalan ng cardinal, lumabas na yung yung image niya, yung mga pictures niya. But even be, but before that, parang wala talaga. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as we know, our Archbishop Adincula, now Cardinal, um, he is a silent worker. True to his name, Jose, just like Saint Joseph, a silent mm -hmm. worker. Um, if if we try to look at his assignments, dun sa previous assignment sa San Carlos, tsaka yung sa assignment niya rin dito, ang mga ginagawa niya is mainly he 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 is really in he is re, really passionate on putting up mission stations mission stations uh, mm -hmm. mission stations for the information of everybody this is putting up christian communities um, in far flung places or not even far uh, far flung but also in the cities, but it's um, making the church closer to the people. And a mission station is also a step, a preparation, a preparation stage for, for a community to become a parish. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Now, for example, here in Capiz, before he came in, in 2011, we only had more or less 30 plus parishes but when he took over now we have more we have close to 70 parishes admission stations really okay pero sa pag-create o sa pagbuo ng mission stations ng bagong parokya hindi po ba nagkukulang ang mga pare na maglilingkod sa communities uh, that is that is a very good question now the cardinal is very brave to to put up mission stations because um, the archdiocese of Capiz is really blessed with so many vocations. We have ordinations every year. With um, every year we have ordinations with an average of three to five um, ordinandi. Really? Uh, okay. So, napakayaman ninyo sa bukasyon. Yes. In fact, um, the Archbishop is also open in loaning, in lending priests to dioceses who are also in need. Really? Wow. That's right. <laughs> Mukhang iba yata yung sitwasyon niya sa Archdiocese ninyo. <laughs> That's right. In um, some areas, kulang ang pare, kulang ang mga manggagawa, so to speak. Yung uh, workers in the vineyard. Pero kayo, three to five ang inyong na-ordinan sa pagkapare every year. That's something. That's right. Um, in fact, kung, um, dito sa parish na assign ako ngayon, this is a town 45 minutes away from the city. Uh, tatlo kaming pare dito. This is a big parish. And this parish has already been... Um, has been given three more mission stations. So in just one town, there are four. Uh, one parish and three mission stations. And in this parish, we have, there are three of us here um, serving this parish. Oh, okay. So you know, marching orders ng cardinal designate. Uh, you form mission stations. Pero sino ang backup ninyo? Meron po bang religious sisters? or yung mga rural missionaries to help you in your missions? Um, that is a very interesting question. Dahil dito sa Capiz, um, the entire di archdiocese is run by secular clergy. Walang religious, uh, walang mga Jesuits, walang Dominicans, walang religious orders dito. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, eh, bihira, so practically, uh, Na, so, uh, mga more or less, mga 130 ang mga pare ng Archdiocese of Capiz. Wow, that's something. Maybe that could be one of the reasons why uh, the good Archbishop was uh, given the honor to be uh, a cardinal. Hindi po ba? Uh, that's the um, reason, no? He, uh, the, the cardinal was really reflecting on the reason why the Holy Father 
considered him for this um, honor and for this obligation. Uh, what enters into his, to his mind was that um, he maybe he was just uh, continuing the idea of the church going to the peripheries and putting up a mission station is, a, is an answer to the invitation and to the call of the Holy Father to really to attend to those people in the, in far, uh, in the periphery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Father, uh, yung bang inyong mission stations, meron din bang mga basic ecclesial communities? And that is the backbone of the mission station and, and of the parish. At dyan talaga kami nag-umuhugot ng lakas sa mga members ng mga BEC. Okay. Uh, magandang pag-usapan nito sapagkat in some instances, yung mga communities na yan, pinagdududahan ng militar na nagagamit ng mga kalaban ng pamahalaan. So, how do you insulate the basic ecclesial communities from the doubts and probably accusations of some uniformed entities coming from the government? Now, if we try to, if, if, I, if I answer that, ito yung nangyayari. Um, we serve everybody. Mm. And yung pagsasabi natin mga militants, no, yung mga NPA, um, Catholics rin sila. Nagsisimba rin sila. We also serve them. The mm -hmm. church serves them. We administer sacraments for them because we also need spiritual um, we also need spirit, the spiritual services of the church. Mm -hmm. So, yun. Okay. Um, in the same manner, everybody. yeah, in the same manner, policemen and soldiers also go to church. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, in fact, Meron isang parish dito, sa uh, upland siya. Yung mga nagsisimba doon, so mga kwan din, yung mga, mili uh, mga militants din. Pero we, um, we cater to them in the same manner that we also cater to the military people. Mm -hmm. Pero hindi po ba nagkakaroon ng conflict dahil sa alam nyo naman? Uh, al ma maliwanag pa sa ating uh, gunita yun nangyari sa Negros doon sa That's sakop right. ng uh, Diocese of San Carlos merong sagay nine merong labing apat na magsasakang napatay ng simultaneous you know? things like that very bloody experiences indeed um, yes it the situation um, it is a complex reality. Kasi nag-aaway-away nag um, or nag-aaway-away, hindi naman siguro nag-aaway-away. Um, it is a web no, of interconnectedness na sa church side, sa military side, tsaka sa militant side. So, and where is the church? Basta ang, 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 ang might ni Cardinal is we respect um, basic human rights. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in the same manner as uh, the now Saint uh, Oscar Romero was known no, for his stand for human rights, no, for defending the downtrodden. What are the thoughts of the latest Cardinal on human rights? Ano po ang narinig ninyong mga sinabi niya Tungkol okay. dito sa karapatang pangtao. When he was interviewed by, by the Vatican Press, um, he has his stand also on social issues. And he would say, I would like to quote him in total, that the church needs to ensure that human dignity and human rights of the people are respected. And, and for him, um, this can be addressed in the alleviation of poverty because, well, the Cardinal believes that poverty is one of the reasons why we have social problems. And for the mind of the Cardinal, um, education is the way to develop the people so they can earn more 
in order to live a more decent life. Mm-hmm. And that is why he would always put up uh, mission stations and also with schools. He is also very passionate about putting up parochial schools and Catholic schools at that. Yeah, but uh, definitely the COVID-19 pandemic brought everyone to their knees, no? to our knees. How yes. was Catholic schools and the Catholic Church in a rural setting like the Archdiocese of Capis survive? Um, now we have our we have our several Catholic schools here, parochial schools, and uh, true enough, it's it has turned upside down. Everybody, mm-hmm. but in our case here, we we also adhere to the to DepEd um, provisions and plans. And for Catholic schools here, we are also into uh, we are also into modular and. Mm-hmm and online learning. Um, okay. However, I also received reports that some of the teachers, the probationary ones, were not, um, were not able to, to join this year's um, enro- uh, teaching, the teaching uh, staff. Uh, yes. Dahil hindi na rin nakaya. Hindi na rin nakaya. Okay. So, ganito po yung sitwasyon. Uh, limitado ang pumapasok sa simbahan. Ang pagkakaalam ko, ang sabi ni Archbishop Palma sa Cebu, wala silang second collection. Kung meron man, eh, ibibigay doon sa higit na nangangailangan mga parokya na marami ring mahirap na mga nananampalataya. In your case, as far as you know, how do you help people in the peripheries? Directly helping them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we have our social action arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Archdiocese has a social action arm, and the Cardinal has also put up a technical vocational school. Um, so, yun, merong, merong mga programs na for free. Pagkatapos, in, in, in the case of the priests, those well off or well to do parishes, um, we also help our brother priests. Na, 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 na apektuhan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mabuti po naman kung ganun. Pero I just don't know about facts and figures about people afflicted with COVID-19 in your area of responsibility, sa Archdiocese. Uh, ano po ang sitwasyon? Um, well, our church, we could only do as much in as uh, considering that the church also has been affected. Uh, if you notice, now if you could remember, um, when we had our lockdown, walang masses, walang sacraments, so it means walaring mga walaring pumapasok na mga collections, walaring financial help, so practically na apekto hundred yung mga parishes, so uh, we really had to tighten our belts. Tapos, we really have to, that's where we, our savings really are very valuable. Mm, okay, so you existed on savings. That's Mabuti right. Mabuti po at meron, no? Pero God forbid, yes. <laughs> magkaroon ng kalamidad, eh, problemang malaki yan. Pero that's katulad right. niyan, ang bagong kardinal, ang chair ng Office on Women sa Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. What has been his views about women, especially, uh, sabi nga, do sa isang uh, television network sa Europe, may program sila 51%, sapagkat 51% ng mamamayan sa daigdig ay kababaihan. Ano po ang kanyang mga nagiging pahayag? Um, now, in this regard, uh, I am not privy sa mga work niya doon sa Office on Women, doon sa CBCP. So, wala akong maibibigay na sagot sa tanong na yun. Ah, okay. Pero wala siya nabanggit kung ano ang uh, pananaw niya sa problemang kinakaharap ng kababaihan. Especially now na may COVID-19, meron tayong mga umuuwi na mga overseas Filipinos na walang trabaho, na parang 
hirapang makabalik sa maayos na kabuhayan. You know, things like this uh, could bring problems to the family, which is the basic uh, unit of society. At kahit sa atin sa simbahan, eh, yung pamilya ang pinakamahalaga sa simbahan, di po ba? Mm-hmm. Um, ang, what I can uh, remember is ang affected yung mga immigrants, uh, yung mga migrant workers yeah. na displaced sila abroad and they had not, uh, they have nothing else to do but to really come home. Yeah. Kasi mm-hmm. displaced na sila doon. Um, the, as far as I know, again, the Cardinal is very supportive of the Commission on Migrants and kasi as, as far as we know, meron tayong mga different Uh, committees and commissions. Mm-hmm. So that, although hindi ko, um, I'm not privy kung ano yung mga thoughts niya on women. So hindi ko rin ma- masagot. Uh, okay. Uh, ngayon po na hindi siya maglalakbay patungo sa Roma, ano ang kanyang pinagkakaabalahan? Ano ang kanyang priorities? Um, right now, it just it's just so funny because after the announcement, everybody wanted to have a piece of the man. Uh-huh. Um, uh, funny dahil everybody would uh, post pictures and uh, on, the, on the social media and claim their level of relationship with him. The affinity. Not, yeah. the, and the affinities and everything. Uh-huh. So, doon. Um, yun lang muna. Pero ngayon, ang pinagkakabalahan niya lang talaga is he knows that he is still the Archbishop of Capiz and he is still working on the concerns of the Archdiocese. Mm-hmm. Yun lang. Uh, yun, yun lang. lang. Uh, pero yun abanggit po ba siya kung anong uh, tanggapan sa Vatican ang lalakukan niya? Sa ngayon, walang, walang, kwan, walang communication from the Vatican, even from the Nusiature, kung kung ano yung magiging placement niya doon sa Curia or sa the Philippine Church as a whole wala mm-hmm. pa ang ang clear lang talaga sa kanya is he was designated as a cardinal and then uh, he remains as the archbishop of the archdiocese of Capiz when he was announced last October 25 the following morning October 26 uh, the nunciature tried to contact him the number two pers- uh, the number two guy from the Nusha Yeah. Then, yeah. Yes. But ipinaabot yung congratula- congratulations para sa kanya. Aside from that, wala nang kung ano pa yung mga further assignments niya, wala na. Wala mm-hmm. pa. How did he take it when he learned that he was named a cardinal? At first, he was unbelieving. Um... Because wala talaga sa sistema niya at wala talaga sa thinking niya na mangyayari ito. Um, when, if, we, if we go back to this, uh, to October 25, so dito sa atin, that was a Sunday, um, 7 in the evening, but in the Vatican, it's 12 noon. For the at angelos. yun yung time na the, the, the Holy Father would lead in the prayer of the angelos. Angelus, yes. Mm-hmm. Then after the Angelus, actually, it so happened also that during that time, we had three priests from Capiz who were there um, in the plaza, in the square. Really? And then, because these three, these three pre- young priests were sent by the cardinal for their further studies. They just left Capiz last October 10. And then upon reaching Rome, they had to undergo the usual 14-day quarantine. And after completing it, they decided that on that Sunday, October 25, they go to the square and listen to the Pope praying the Angelus. Yeah. And it was to their utmost surprise that they heard the name of the Archbishop and they heard the name Capiz, Philippines. Uh-huh. So they tried to contact and then words... Uh, Spread. Uh, news uh, spread that fast. It was only until 7.30, 30 minutes after uh, the news broke, 
that it uh, that it came to the cardinal. Meron siyang dalawang kasamang mga pari sa residence niya. At yung dalawang pari uh, humahangus uh, papunta sa kanya at sinabi, ka, uh, Monsignor, Cardinal ka na daw. Tapos ang unang dumating kay, nasa, sa isipan ni Cardinal, ah baka mali yan. Kasi dito sa Panay Island, tatlo kaming obispo na Jose ang pangalan. Uh-huh. Yung Jose, si, um, si Archbishop Jose Romeo Lasso of Archdiocese of Haro. Si Bishop Jose Corazon Talaok of the Diocese of Calibo. And Jose Lazaro Advincula of the Archdiocese of Capiz. But then, these two priests insisted, Monsignor, pero merong Capiz at merong family name na Advincula. Yun. So uh-huh. when he learned about it, he was, he was really in shock. He was trembling. Because few few minutes after, Um, the other priest also uh, went to the bishop's palace and then they, they, they were congratulating him. They actually pour, uh, opened a bottle of red wine to celebrate. <laughs> Pero hindi na ubos ni Cardinal kasi he was trembling na sasagi niya yung goblet. Uh-huh. Sabi niya, ayaw ko nang uminom. Uh-huh. Kasi parang uh, nandun pa rin yung kaba. And also, he slept That night, um, close to 1 a.m. already, and he woke up very early, still. Mm-hmm. So um, that was his that was his feeling. He was already contented, and he was preparing for for his retirement home already before the announcement. Um, yeah, he but he's before... still young at 68, right? Yes, but it's also he he is preparing for his retirement for for 75. As he reaches 75. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so yun. Uh, masaya pala, no? <laughs> While yes. planning for retirement, binigyan ng bagong assignment. Okay. Uh, yan, yan yung nangyari exactly. Kay, if you notice yung story behind also the papacy, the election to the papacy of um, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Uh-huh. Um, after John Paul II, St. John Paul, I, heard, uh, I, I think I read somewhere that he was already preparing to retire from the from the from the curia, and he just wanted to keep on writing. Mm-hmm. But then, papacy knocked on his door, mm-hmm. at, at nagbago na rin lahat. So ganon din na yun ang nangyari. Ganon din na okay. nangyari ngayon. So starting today, Monday, and uh, for these uh, succeeding days. Uh, ang ginawa doon sa Archbishop's Palace, um, kinonvert yung ground floor na receiving area at yung big office niya to receive uh, well-wishers and also for those who, who want to see him and to do some courtesy calls before him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but definitely he has to uh, be careful too because of COVID-19. Pabuti exactly. na po yung sigurado. No? Uh, mm-hmm. We can never tell. Uh, ano po ang inyong mensahe doon sa mga nanonood sa atin na who may come from the Archdiocese of Capiz? You may address them in your dialect. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, sa mga taga-Capiz o taga-Capiz, um, kahibalugin ako nga uh, nalipay gid kita sa nangin announcement sa aton Santo Papa sa paghimo niya kay Archbishop Advincula na isa sa mga cardinal. So naghatag ini sa aton sang tuman nga kalipay kag ang ginapangayo lang gid sa aton nga cardinal sa Siningation amo ang iya nga ang aton nga pagpangamuyo nga sa sini nga bag-o panibag-o nga obligasyon nga ginhatag sa iya ti iya nga pangayo sa sang grasya sang kusog na iya ini mahimo nga bago nga obligasyon para sa simbahan. Um, he, um, so Melo, he would always say, no, when, when I asked him, uh, what is your prayer? He was really asking for the grace of strength na he could really uh, take up the responsibility. And he would always say in his prayer, Lord, uh, this is your church. Use me, use your priests, use your people. Very good. Very well. 
This won't be the last uh, interaction we will have on Zoom. Sa paglipas ng panahon, maybe kung merong mga pagbabago, kung tatanggapin na niya yung kanyang red hat from either of the cardinals or from the sovereign or from the nunciature, keep us posted. And this oh, will yeah. be very momentous for us because nobody gets to be a cardinal just like that. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, I have fact, a, I've had a chance to uh, know uh, the former uh, Cardinal, Ricardo J. Cardinal Vidal of Cebu. He was once with the Archdiocese of Lipa. And he was once a rector at uh, Mount Carmel Seminary in Sariaya, Quezon. Mm-hmm. Nakaibigan yes. po siya nung Archdiocese of Lipa na yung kanyang assignment. And he was trying to convince me to join. <laughs> Sabi ko, mukhang mahirap yata yan, eminence. Uh, Archbishop at the time. And then I uh-huh. met him again. Uh, yung isang memorable meeting ko sa kanya was uh, during uh, the launching of uh, the Year of Mercy in 2015. Mm-hmm. At sabi niya, natatandaan pa kita. Sabi ko, mabuti po naman, eminence, ay hindi ka ikakinaya ng powers ko na makumbinsing magtrabaho sa simba. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, sabi nga, maraming hiwagang nagaganap. And I'm happy because the Archbishop of Capiz has joined the College of Cardinals. Uh, we will pray for his health, for his success, <laughs> and for his undying mission to establish mission stations and create new parishes and continue to culture the vocations among uh, the residents of the Archdiocese. Father, thank you very much. In Bicol, we say Jos yes. Mabalos. Thank you. Jos uh, Mabalos. Thank, thank you, you also. God All bless the best. you. Salamat po, mga kaibigan. Yan po naman ang ating coffee chat kay Father Emil mula po naman sa Archdiocese of Capis. Have a nice time. God bless us all. Thank you.